Hey people, welcome to Food for Action. This is uh, the tenth one. I hope it's working. Oh, there we go. Uh, welcome to Food for Action. This is the tenth time that I'm joining you guys. And uh, um, I hope everybody's doing well, good, um, out there in the universe. <laughs> uh, crazy times we're living in, uh, of course. So let me first start, as I always do, to make sure that everybody understands what this is for. This is my, um, hopefully, or prayerfully, this is um, an, uh, a call, I guess, that I've been given to reach people to try to uh, have everybody come to the table, welcome, welcome, uh, come to the table and, uh, and speak to each other and understand, come to an understanding of this whole um, racism thing in America, this whole equality or in, un, inequality, this um, the oppression and the um, and basic principles of loving each other. Um, uh, but again, when, when it has to be um, in life, in order to have a solution, people have to acknowledge uh, what exists um, and try to do their best to, to um, understand uh, wh where things, thoughts, belief systems, where they come from um, so that we can uh, understand why we're here. Um, when, um, when things uh, originate, that is, it's, it's basically, it's, it's, it's part of the, it's, I guess, like, just like everything has a foundation, a house, um, has a foundation the the original belief systems of the uh usually power structure um in in especially in our case um when when their belief systems guide the rules and the laws um then there is always going to be uh some form of oppression happening because there are different belief systems and, and to understand that and for people to acknowledge it and to help things change for the better, uh, we have to acknowledge that those things exist. Uh, we can't just continue uh, to, you know, some people, uh, uh, you know, saying that, well, that happened so many years ago and so uh, they weren't responsible for what their fathers, fathers, fathers did or so on. And, we can't keep using that as an excuse uh, because it started somewhere and it, and in order for it to change again like I said a minute ago it has those those former things have to be addressed because they're still part of the fabric of of our uh, of our nation you know we still do things um, based on and live and and structure things based on uh, what happened hundreds of years ago. You can't deny that. We can't just say, oh, that was them, and that was then, and that we're going to, you know, it's not our fault. We just need to get over it. There's there's no such thing as getting over something that you can't get over. Like, it's impossible to get over it because it was created to be over uh, uh, a certain people in the first place. You know, uh, um, we don't have uh, a, a king or a queen in this country, but but there are the tops. There are the, there's the president. There's 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 there's, there's a hierarchy of, of things. Just like you know, in in any business or you know, there's always um, uh, a captain. You know, uh, somebody in charge, and and you if that uh, if that person or those people are in charge and they are part of, they were birthed uh, from part of that belief system that created the, the, uh, the oppressive ways, then it literally innately still keeps going. Um, and maybe sometimes those people don't even realize what they're doing. Uh, no, I find that hard to believe, but I'll, you know, just being nice, I guess I'll say, hey, maybe they don't realize. But that's not an excuse. Uh, when you see things as boldly as you're seeing them today, um, there's no way 
that you can just say get over it. Uh, this is not uh, it's not a headache, it's not a cold. It's it's uh, it's a life issue uh, that we're dealing with, and everyone that breathes air, that is cognizant, that can think, that can understand, that can communicate, has to be part of the solution. There is no such thing as anyone thinking that they can just lay back because they're not part of the problem and, uh, and think that everything's just going to, you know, be fine and um, it, it, it just doesn't work that way. If you're, if you're not taking a part, uh, if you're not taking being part of the problem, again, like I always say, if you're not part of the problem, you're part of the solution. Um, so uh, I, I'm hoping that this um, live stream thing helps people keep the conversation going. It's not about so much even what, we're, what we do while during the 45 minutes, hour, or whatever I, I end up spending on here. It's about what happens afterwards, you know. Uh, it's just like going to church, and I'm not comparing this to church, but, uh, you know, when you go to church and you get a sermon, um, it's not so much what you do while you're sitting there in the chairs, seats, pews, or whatever kind of thing you got at your church. It's about what you do with it every day afterwards. Um, how do you walk away with that uh, sermon? And so uh, I'm hoping that, that this will serve as the, um, the um, I guess, instigator of, of a conversation that's very necessary. Um, and let me also add that it's not just a conversation with a white person or a black person or a brown person. Or It's not just about that conversation. That conversation should happen. But it's more so about the conversation that, that white Americans are having amongst each other. Because as I showed you earlier this week, uh, Wednesday, the conversation is quite different amongst a lot of white folks when they're talking amongst themselves. Uh, let me also say, because I guess you have to, um, is that I am not here uh, hating white people. Um, I don't hate anybody. Uh, but what I am doing is trying to express a problem. And we do have a racial divide in this country. Uh, my mom is white, and she's the most amazing woman in the universe. So, um, again, this is not about hating white people. This is about solving a problem that does exist that certain people try to uh, pretend doesn't. Um, this coming Wednesday, I am going to uh, put the spotlight on another individual and some of that individual's friends like I did this past Wednesday. And we're going to go through some of the uh, Facebook posts and we're going to talk about some of the nasty things that, that this person says. And then I'm going to uh, let you know all the people that are taking part because apparently, just as the few folks that I um, focused on Wednesday, um, apparently uh, they are okay with expressing these things and they don't care if you know because they're uh, posting these things and having these conversations on Facebook and they're our friends, quote unquote. And so um, I think it's important for all of us to understand uh, I think, it's, I think it's important for all of us to understand what our neighbors and our brothers are saying. It's important to understand that, that, um, that um, people, people need to be held accountable for their, not just what they do, but their thinking as well. And, um, and it's up to each of us to spark those conversations as well. If you, if you don't do that and you are aware that somebody is talking, being hateful or or, or nasty or mean or ugly or whatever, if you don't acknowledge those things, then, you know, it can hurt the next person. Um, I don't, uh, myself, I think it's, you know, I, I want to know um, what people are saying. I want to know if somebody's smiling my face and shooting me in the back. I want to know that. Um, hey, Ashley, what's happening, brother? Uh, OBR Church is doing our part on racism, but how do you feel about the black racist on white people. Okay, so um, just as I always say, there is there is quote unquote reverse racism, there, where there are some black folks that don't, that hate white people, and 
Um, that's just the is it, it, it's wrong, just as wrong as the other hatred. The 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 only thing that we're focusing on though, Ash, Ashley, is that um is that the power structure um, which creates systemic racism, uh, the power structure makes it so that that one has a worse effect on society. They all suck, and God's going to make everybody pay for all, all hatred. But because of the power structure, how things were founded in this country, then um, the effect that it has on a community, on the nation, on a city, and so on, it has less effect going one way than it does the other. Because one can hold pe a whole people down, and the other one is just kind of, we know that you hate us. Um, you know, um, if black, if, you know, I, I, I always tell the story of, of um, as me growing up, because I'm light skinned, my mom's white, my dad's black. And so uh, we grew up in several different uh, neighborhoods. Sometimes we were in a, in a, you know, upper crust white suburban area, then, then other times we were in the ghetto. And for us, uh, sometimes going to black schools, um, we would get picked on and, and, and chastised and bullied because we were lighter and you know so so there was a hatred towards black folks to, to us growing up and then other times we'd be in a predominantly uh, i'm sorry did i say that right predominantly black neighborhood yeah they would hate on us and then we'd go to a predominantly white neighborhood and they would hate on us so we were kind of stuck in the middle so all of it is ugly all hatred all racism is ugly again though in this country because um because the power structure is more white based I don't know another way to say that, then that that hatred um, becomes more lethal because power is involved. It's not just it's and it's not just and numbers are involved. So it's not just um, uh, a people hating another people. It's a system hating a people. And that's where it gets ugly. Um, but I appreciate that question. And all hatred should be addressed. All racism should be addressed equally because no, just as God says a sin is a sin is a sin there's no sin greater than another sin if you commit a sin and you don't ask God for forgiveness and ask him into your heart then what happens you're going to hell there it is so we, we got that part down packed and I, I appreciate again I appreciate the question but please do understand that it is there is a significant difference in uh, between uh, white hate, uh, racism towards black folk or uh, versus black hatred towards white folks again just as ugly just as evil just as nasty just as mean just as sinful but in the world we live in the this uh you know the, the ground we walk on and all that it it's it's um because the system is more led um but by a kind of white power structure um then that makes it um, uh, have be more damaging in this country. So you're welcome, man. I appreciate that those words and keep on doing what y'all are doing at, at your church, and um, and talk to you know have this conversation with other folks. It's it's really 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 important. And Ashley, I don't know if you friended my uh, or liked the page, but if you get a chance, please do that. I'm gonna start posting more and more stuff. Um, this week has been a tough week because I still am battling this chronic Lyme disease, and it kicks my ass. And excuse me, oops, oop. It kicks my butt, and so, um, so even today, like you can see, I'm in the dark because it's well more dark than usual because uh, my headache is just ripping my brains out. So, um, but I still felt it's necessary to keep this thing going. So, um, again, appreciate you, Ashley. Keep the thing going and invite people to come and do this with us, man. Every Wednesday and Sunday, 7 p.m. Sometimes a couple minutes late. Um, but but 7 p.m. and then I just kind of go until, you know, I feel that we've we've uh, communicated enough for that day. Uh, last uh, Wednesday, I think we went for like an hour and 45 minutes, and I appreciate everybody that stopped by and 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 joined in the conversation. It was awesome, um, and we want to keep this going so that we can be um, part of the solution. That if we keep these conversations going and we pass the conversations on to other folks and their folks and friends and friends and all, so on and so on. Uh, the next thing you know, a couple generations down the road, maybe they don't have to have this conversation anymore because it is all about love and how God intends things to be. Um, I do want to answer another question that I got 59 questions about this week. 
um, probably more than that, um, but that was just a number that popped in my brain just now. Um, I'm, I, 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 I would really, 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 really appreciate it if someone can tell me, and this is totally off of, of the racism uh, subject for a second. This is about the virus thing, and again, I'm not changing the, com the, the complexion of this, uh, of this stream, but I have to answer this question because people, people send me the messages about it. So I, I'm, I'm wondering if anybody can give me a viewpoint on um, how people think that Jesus would not have worn a mask if, and, and this is the only time I hopefully that I'll have to breach this subject because my, to my knowledge, um, Jesus would have done everything in the universe to promote love, care, and compassion to, um, to, our, to his neighbors, brothers, fellow men, so on. Um, um, you know, uh, I, I, I couldn't see Jesus being in this world, seeing pain, death, sickness happening, and he walks around without a mask when it is known amongst the land that wearing a mask can help another person. Rather, you worried about yourself or not, that's up to you. But I know that Jesus wanted everybody to love on everybody and walk as an example, walk in his light. So if that's the case, then how would Jesus not wear a mask? Uh, it's very confusing to me that some people try to put Jesus all up in the middle of their nonsensical views, and I'm sorry that's judgmental, but it is. I really mean that. I think that, that if you have an opportunity to help save, uh, love on uh, your fellow man, neighbor, brother, then you are doing a, an incredible disservice, and I think you're, it's almost blasphemy to, to say that Jesus wouldn't do something that represents what Jesus stood for, and that's love for your brother, for your fellow brother, man woman, child, um, especially children. Uh, we know that God, God put children above all. Um, so, um, I, I, I would, I just find it very difficult when, when I see those kind of posts on Facebook. So sorry for going out on that tangent, but I had to pose that if anybody wants to contribute to that, um, and tell me something that will blow my mind of why Jesus wouldn't have done that, please let me know. Um, but anyways, so on to Back to uh, the subject. So, um, a few things uh, that I wanted to talk about today. A handy dandy notebook. Uh, oh, hold on. There are no numbers. Uh, okay. Before I get back, I got it. Uh, Ashley says there are no numbers showing the effects of wearing a mask, but it has been proven that if you wear one, it will help cut down on the cut down the virus from getting out to others. Exactly, and that's the point I'm making. I don't know the numbers. There are numbers now. I've, I've listened to the Dr. Fauci's and all these other people. Um, there are plenty on, 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 uh, on any network uh, where they, they have some numbers on, on the percentage of effect that it cuts down on, on spreading the virus. Um, and, 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 that, and that's what it's supposed to be about. It, the, the purpose of the mask is maybe saves you, but definitely helps if you have it to, to um, make it less... Uh, give less possibility of spreading it. Um, so a lot of people are asymptomatic, and so they don't even know that they have it. They don't have symptoms, but they still carry it. And if, if they're just, you know, walking around casually without worrying about it, they could be spreading it to uh, whoever they walk by, sit next to, or so on, if they don't wear a mask. So thanks again, Ash. Uh, all right, so let me get to a couple things. I can't see in the dark, but um, oops, this is the wrong side. I got mad notes. I have a folk, this notebook that my daughter gave me, and uh, and I actually it flips, and you can write on both sides backwards, and it's crazy. And so I'm I'm trying to keep a track of my notes. And uh, oops, sometimes I can't. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna go to a couple questions. Let's see. Um, oh, talked about this a little bit um, earlier. Uh, oh, I think Wednesday, I think, um, and the whole thing about Democrats uh, versus Republicans and and uh, let's see Democrats hate America and Republicans love America and all that I I, I, I don't see the the um, I don't see the, to take your phrase uh, Ashley I don't see the numbers in that 
uh, uh, everybody that I know, uh, rather Democrat or Republican, I have friends that are both, and family that are both, so um, I don't know any of them that hate America. Um, I think that's just kind of maybe a political spinny thing that people do, hashtag hate spin. Um, and, you know, it's just, it, it's just stupidity that comes in, that convolutes everything. Uh, there is so much nonsense that people uh, choose to, to spread and, and uh, via news, via um, any media, via social media and so on. There's so much stuff that, that it just, it convolutes things and, and the focus is gone. You know, it, this is, you know, it's, it's such a, we live in such a fickle society um, where people just, uh, you know, with the blind leading the blind, uh, it, you know, people that maybe follow more than they lead. And, and it's just, and, and so people just start throwing out so much ridiculousness and uh, it's just so weird. So literally, I don't think that, um, that it is one political group or another political group that hates America. Uh, I think that there are just maybe some people that hate America. I don't know. Um, they're not close to me. So um, I, I hope that everybody loves America and, uh, and uh, wants to see America do better because we can do way better. America is, uh, we're, we, we've, we've slowed progress a lot. And we got to get back to uh, to um, to loving the country in a real way, um, a real way that represents everybody, that is that makes America love everybody. Because I don't think it's ever been uh, America has never literally really stood for everybody. I'm not saying that individuals haven't. I'm saying that the country as a whole has never loved on everybody the same, and that's kind of one of the reasons why we're here doing this. Um, let's see. Okay, so, um, oh, let's see. Okay. Uh, Rebel Flag. When I was growing up, um, uh, I guess it was like at middle school time. Uh, yeah, it was, I was in middle school when we moved to South Carolina because my father is from Charleston, and so we moved there. And uh, and I remember seeing the flag, and, and I you know, at that point in my life, I wasn't really, I didn't know nothing about other parts of the country and so on. I just knew um, the things that I was being taught in school, and, um, and I knew what I physically, physically myself saw. Um, so I would see uh, trucks driving around with the, with the rebel flag on it. I remember watching Dukes of Hazard that has, um, that has a, um, uh, oh, I'll have to get back to this. Please remind me if I forget. Uh, Sherry, what's happening? You don't think that Jesus would have worn a mask because he always healed people where he, um, where he went. Think about this. He always would touch people with leprosy. Yeah, so I get what you're saying, uh, except that the problem is that because this, uh, because the virus is so widespread, he wouldn't be able to touch everybody, uh, millions of people in the world. Not, not that he couldn't. God is omnipresent and omniperfect and every other, you know, just all powerful, obviously. So it, God can do whatever he wanted to do. And through his son, there was a purpose. And that purpose was to love on folks. So yes, he touched and healed some folks in certain situations to make those things to show the power, to show the magnificent power that God has given his son. Yet, the reason that he went around preaching and uh, with, with, uh, with uh, the... Uh, uh, um, Sorry, the reason that he went around preaching is because he was um, he was making it, it's, it's more than just the fact that he preached. It's it's that he was 
live, a living example of how to love on people. He was a living example of, 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 um, of love and care and compassion. So that would lend itself to examples of things. So if he's going to do examples of things and he's going to show people outwardly, visually, his love, then the mask would be one of those things if it existed like that. So if Jesus was here today this in, on earth walking, if he was here walking amongst the earth, when he would see all of this going on, and we know that the, that the mask could be a helpful tool in this, then he would put the mask on because visually people saw it. We're all, remember, our, our uh, purpose here uh, is to walk and at, be the light, right? So we're being the light by how we act and how we conduct ourselves and in and and how we function not just inwardly and but outwardly that's the most important um part of witnessing to people is letting people um it's not just saying the words and 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 and, uh, and helping people to lead people in prayer to ask jesus into their lives into their hearts it's literally to also physically exemplify something that is beyond you that's the point we're supposed to be more than just about us and doing that sometimes we can't physically interact with a person but they might see us from across the room so when they see the mask then that is a that's a visual for people as well um i i would i would find it so hard to believe that that god wouldn't that, that jesus wouldn't set every example of positivity uh, that he could because uh, he did he did exactly that well while, while he walked this earth well while, while he walked this earth he was the example the light and um he would show compassion and he would show care for other people and that's what a mask is about like ashley said earlier it, it the mask is not about uh it, it's not about the person that's wearing it all a hundred percent it's also about the people that you pass by that that pass by you that you come in contact with it's about protecting each other so uh yeah sherry high five on that but i i, I definitely and you know and you, everybody knows i am definitely a jesus warrior um been on staff at several churches throughout my life and uh and i serve and and uh and i i definitely have to believe that because I've, I've seen what he's done and um, uh, yeah, he, he would wear a mask. He might wear two. I don't know. And that's a, that's a joke. But anyways, um, so back to the Confederate flag. So I, I saw the Confederate flag on Dukes of Hazard car and I saw the um, Confederate flag on some buildings. Uh, I remember uh, going to Columbia south carolina and seeing the flag on the uh what was that like state house or something when we went to do like a marching band competition when i was in high school um but most of the time when i when i oh and also in history books um and um and in history then i don't know how they do it now uh, i hear that it's sim similar to what it was then where you really don't learn the they, you don't learn the hateful message behind the confederate flag they just teach you that it was the pride thing and so on whatever but but um but then we learned later in life when we get got older that uh that there was an incredible negativity to that because it stood for the people that were fighting to keep uh slavery alive so the minute it is literally the flag that is whipped that they wave <laughs> that they carried that represented that side uh then the minute you see that, then you have to say, wait a minute, hold on, let me go back and, and dig and find out about it. And, and, and that was the case. And so, you know, if, if anybody literally knows the, the, um, knows the history behind that flag and the, uh, and the uh, Civil War and, and the slavery, then you know that that, um, that that flag did not stand for something that was good. Um, it stand stood for for uh, the fight to keep slavery going uh 
which is uh, obviously sad. Um, so that is, uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that because I got a hundred messages about that too, about the, the, the rebel flag, Confederate flag, and, uh, and taking down the monuments of some of those, um, some of those, um, 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 leaders on the, the, um, the Confederate, uh, side and, and so on. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. Sorry, you guys, I'm, I'm battling this headache and it's really not cool. So this might be a shorter one today, but, um, uh, let's see. Um, social media. So, um, I would, I would hope that, um, that you guys are, are, um, taking, um, I don't want to say my lead, but taking, um, I don't know, something from what I, what I said Wednesday, and I, and I hope that you guys are going, um, uh, online enough, scrolling through, uh, to find out, um, what people are, uh, speaking about, um, when it comes to this racism issue, um, um, also, um, I hope that you're doing your, your due diligence to, um, find out as many facts on things instead of just, um, agreeing with, um, agreeing with anybody, you know, have an informed view. Um, it's very important. There's a lot of things that are being said, um, when it comes to race in America, there are a lot of things that are being said that are just outright garbage and um, and not true and it's and it's important that people um, take it upon themselves that uh, that they would definitely um, want to um, that they would definitely want uh, you know we want to know um, what we're facing um, every single day we want to know um, who is um, you know uh, who, I can only say it this way, who the haters are. We have to know. Uh, Ashley, let's see. So, Sherry, if I went to the, oh, you're writing the Sherry. Okay, my bad. <laughs> All right, I like it. Ah, we got some communication happening there. Goodness. I like it. Uh, oh, uh, you up hearing that everyone said Confederate flag was heritage and should not be taken down. It wasn't until I read the facts about what the flag stood for that I changed my mind. The Confederate flag started as a Virginia flag, but turned to represent oops, represent the South, which fought to keep slaves. In other words, the Confederate flag stands to keep slave a slave. Correct, sir. Thank you very much. So, yeah, keep them conversations happening with each other. That's awesome. Um... Um, and, uh, and again, please, please, um, please, I, I don't, I don't know how to impress upon everybody the importance at this actual time, um, where the country is hurting in so many different ways that the biggest part of healing is to love each other. That part, it somehow... You know, just as people do during, you know, uh, I remember during Hur Hurricane Hugo and everybody in my apartment complex, all of a sudden everybody was friends with each other, helping each other, cooking out in the back, the uh, back of the uh, apartments and, and, you know, giving food, to, you know, sharing around because things were limited and so on. And, um, and, and coming together uh, shouldn't just be, though, at, at the harsh times, but, but when there are times such as there are now and such um hateful things going on besides the disease and um uh, uh you know the virus and all that it we have to do everything that we can to love on each other despite what any what anybody does thinks or so on we have to do that and and we and we just have to pray that um that us taking that stance, taking the stance of love and 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 compassion um, over feelings. Um, not to say that feelings don't matter, but but you know 
if, if you guys saw some of the things that people have been writing me, you'd think um, the, the private messages that I get. They're, I mean, just nasty, you know, life-threatening and all kind of stuff. It gets, it gets a little crazy. But I always answer those things with loving things in return because I believe that, um, that at some point, Maybe it'll have an effect. It might be the last breath of somebody, you know, right before they pass away, that they might remember something I said and that was a loving, caring thing, regardless of how they felt about me. Um, and it's tough these days, especially when you're talking about racial things, because that's just a hatred that's, oh, it's, it's, it's be, you know, because I'm a mortal being, <laughs> uh, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, to me, uh, racism is it's it's a horrible thing I mean it's I don't even I don't know um, I, I'd rather get a gunshot than that it's, it's because it's it's um, it it can really um, to know that people have that kind of feelings those kind of feelings for another person because of a skin color um, that's just uh, you know we don't, we didn't create this, God did. God created the colors, you know what I mean? Uh, he created all people. And so he didn't create us to hate each other. Uh, that, that's not our purpose, our purpose is not hate. And so when you see that and you feel that coming from people, it makes you wanna, you know, I don't know, makes you wanna do ugly things. But instead, um, I choose to, to, um, to take the godly road and uh, and just return love for that, um, and and you know hopefully it, hopefully it, it has some effect. Um, um, that would be awesome to know that it does have some effect. Um, anyways, um, I'm gonna have to cut this a little bit short because my head is kicking my butt so bad, and it's hard for me to keep my head up and everything. But um, um, I love you guys. Keep the conversation going. Um, with each other, love on each other, man, have conversations, white folks, have conversation with other white folks, please, help people understand, give them some words, give them some love and encouragement about, you know, give them some knowledge, you know, uh, I know you see the things that I post, and, and many millions of people are posting that have to do with racism, and has, you know, do with factual things, and and there's articles and everything else that are that are on my sites and on, um, but on many people's Instagrams and everything else. So please um, share these conversations with folks, you know, and and discover uh, again. Read read down your timelines because there's things being said, and you might just be the one person that can have a, a good lasting effect on somebody. You never know, so. Uh, but you're not going to know unless you give it a shot. So, anyways, um, um, I love you guys, and uh, and I will be back Wednesday, um, 7 p.m., Food for Action. Um, thank you for tuning in, and uh, let's fight this racism thing, man. Let's kick it in the rear, in the posterior region, so that, uh, you know. Um, uh, oh, one more message. Thanks. The only thing for me is I feel in order to fix it we need to address both sides yeah um and that's what i that's what i keep saying that that's what the point of this is is to is to have both sides of things everybody has to to um to but that's what this conversation is for it's for both sides to acknowledge everything that's going on it's just like uh, just like any man or woman um we have to analyze ourselves um to fix ourselves so that we can help other people. And, um, and if we don't do that, then uh, we're failing in this mission. So um, study everything, you know, I do, I have to, I, to I told everybody this Wednesday, I have to listen to everybody's news. <laughs> I have to watch, I have to go on everybody's websites. Um, every time to, uh, that I get a new question, I have to go on another website and look up another thing and, and I have to, I want to see I want to see what the reasoning is on every, and from every angle and that's the whole point of me doing this is that I want people to conversate with me and each other so that we can all 
get more knowledge about our everybody's experiences so that we can heal this thing. It can't be done if it's just coming from me or if it's just coming from you. It's got to be coming from everybody. We have to share our experiences in life, especially on, in this topic, so that we can heal and hopefully defeat that uh, enemy called racism. So thank you again, Ashley. Uh, be cool this week. Um, see, uh, Hopefully you'll tune in Wednesday and tell some friends, man. Tell all your friends out there to tune in Wednesday, 7 p.m. And if they can't make it then, make it next Sunday. But every Wednesday and Sunday, 7 p.m., food for action. Love you guys. Take care of yourself. Same black time, same black channel.